Hello friends, welcome to my channel, myself Vivek Maya. Today I am going to do one video about, uh, about the low cost materials and techniques I have used my, in my past 5 years. I have been working in this field for last 5 years and I have a uh, little knowledge and uh, experience about these uh, materials. So today I am going to do one webinar on this. If you are watching first time, please subscribe my channel also like my videos. Thank you. Okay, today uh, I am going to uh, give a webinar on low cost house techniques and materials. So uh, this, when we talk about low cost house and techniques, uh, there are several materials we can uh, make it uh, make the house uh, as a low cost. And similarly, uh, there are some techniques to make the house affordable and low cost. There are some of ideas I have uh, I am doing in my site. So today I am going to share the photos, uh, techniques, everything uh, that I have done in my uh, work. What are the contents? Contents uh, introduction and interlocking stability soil bricks, how to manufacture these kind of bricks and uh, how to uh, construct house using these bricks and also the cost analysis, uh, similarly these uh, construction methods and summary, these are the contents included. Uh, we will move to the next slide. Here, Housing is a basic need of human being. As we know that uh, after food, uh, cloth and the next third essential thing is the house. So here I have some data taken from the census. Here in the uh, census data it is showing that 24.7 crores of houses are there in India total. Uh, actually there are 33 crores but only for the purpose of living we are using 24.7 crores houses. In that 24.7 crores, 23.4 uh, crores are in good and livable condition. That's our, uh, they are in a good and livable condition and in that 1.3 crores, these are dilapidated that means broken it's not in a good condition to live in the, in that house in those houses and one more thing is these 1.3 uh, dilapidated houses or broken houses uh, 80 percentage is located in the rural areas that is the thing here the majority of the this kind of broken houses are located in the rural areas and only 20 percentage is located in urban areas uh, the main reason for this is as per the NSSO, uh, uh, the report shows that the 30 percentage of uh, below be, below poverty line uh, families live in rural areas. Uh, uh, this may be the reason for this, like the majority of broken houses are located in rural areas. So, we need to give necess uh, affordable houses for them. So, there is a necessity of low cost housing in rural areas. So, when we talk about the earth, uh, the oldest building material, as we know, the earth is the oldest building material and we know that our ancestors uh, uh, built houses using earth as a building material. After invention or discovering the new material and modern met, uh, techniques, the soil or earth fell out its popularity as a construction material. Uh, then people started using cement, concrete, plastic, some composite materials as a construction method. And what happened is uh, in future days there is a uh, energy crisis arrived like energy crisis then uh, environmental and ecological issues uh, were there. So because of the modern techniques the use of new materials there is a problem uh, people facing for this decomposition then ecological issues and environmental effect. So these are the some of the issues faced when modern uh, techniques and materials used and after what happened is again it is the uh, revival time revi revival time for the soil as a construction material but there are some problems for uh, uh, soil uh, alone as a construction material because it has the stability problem like uh, structural stability is not there so one more thing is the durability problem so these are the two uh, issues faced when we use earth as a building material because of the structural stability and uh, durability issues uh, then started using CSCB CSCB is the compressed stabilized earth block uh, these blocks these are the material is earth only but it is pressed with some mechanical forces and cast into small bricks and when we use CSCB over other uh, earth materials, there are some of advantages like one is local material like around, uh, around, us, uh, around our area, the locally available material or soil can be used as a uh, material for this. Next is cast in situ that means uh, by using the locally available material we can cast the bricks 
uh, or blocks in the site itself wherever required next next is the local economy because instead of importing or spending much money on uh, materials like imported materials it is better to use the locally available material and if somebody is there to uh, manufacture somebody is interested in our in around our area uh, the economy goes to the local people so that will be benefit uh, beneficial for us next thing is fast and easy construction is possible by using this kind of uh, uh, bricks or blocks because csc become pressure stabilized earth blocks which are uh, locally manufactured and next is uh, less carbon emission because we know that in india we use burned brick as a major construction uh, material for the walls or buildings but if you are using stabilized Stabilizing is nothing but increasing the property of soil by adding some stabilizing agents or mechanically or we use cement, chemicals, biological uh, stabilization, some are, some are the methods for stabilizing. Stabilizing is nothing but uh, strengthening the soil or earth or changing the property of the soil uh, as the requirement. So these are the sum of uh, benefits or be advantages of CSCB. Next, move on to the next slide. Uh, interlocking stabilized, stabilized soil brick, which is nothing but CSCB only, but there is a uh, little changes. That means there are some of interlocking uh, grooves are given, as you can see in the left side picture. The, uh, the bricks are, uh, which, which is of dry stacking. That means it's a mortarless construction technology. That's why it is called interlocking stabilized brick. The brick is same as CSCB, compressed earth blocks, but uh, here some interlocking system is used for the uh, locking purpose. And one more thing is there is no cement, no sand, nothing is used because there is no bonding material is used in between the brick courses. And uh, these kind of bricks are manufactured by compacting earth mixed stabilizer such as cement and chemicals. As you can see, uh, the, in the right side there is a house constructed with this kind of uh, interlocking uh, bricks in that you can see there is no gap between the uh, brick courses because there is no mortar the, the cement is not used for the stacking or the uh, laying of the uh, brick courses next move on to the uh, materials what are the materials for this uh, interlocking bricks these are the materials here we use uh, soil uh, soil or red soil actually it is laterite soil and uh, it is it should be a passing of 20 mm the size should be less than 20 mm next is cement uh, as a stabilizing agent and two more chemicals are used one is sera plus 300 and sera latex in different company or different manufacturing uh, factories they use different chemicals but the purpose is only for stabilizing here you can see the left side sera plus 300 is used for a high tensile and impact strength and also the bonding between cement and soil in the right side also you can see the sera latex it is nothing but a uh, rubber latex which is used to uh, resist or uh, resist the attack of uh, in, uh, insects such as ants and all uh, for that purpose we are adding sera latex also the increase of bonding strength between soil uh, with the cement these are the overall materials used for uh, casting of these bricks and also water should be added move to next slide uh, I will explain uh, how these bricks are manufactured. Uh, here weigh batching is done. Uh, it is like we have to weigh the uh, materials like how much soil is required, how much cement is required uh, like that. And after weigh batching around 6 to uh, 8 percentage of cement is added in this kind of bricks and also the chemicals. And next uh, you can see there is a mixer mechanical mixer should be used for the mixing of uh, proper to get homogeneous mixture we should use a mechanically operated mixer next is uh, the mix uh, after mixing the soil it can it can be poured into uh, dye dye means you can see there uh, it's the mold you can see uh, the grooves are uh, located in this uh, mold that's why the bricks are getting that kind of interlocking system next is uh, after after mixing the soil we should pour into this uh, uh, machine it is a, a hydraulically operated machine and uh, you can see the bricks are produced in this in that machines uh, there is a speed of uh, three uh, bricks can be cast in a minute around 60 seconds you can uh, produce three uh, bricks 
these are the method of uh, casting of this bricks and uh, next thing is curing curing means uh, the bricks after casting should be kept under shade and it should not be exposed to uh, sunlight because the moisture should not escape from these bricks this kind of curing is followed and a minimum of seven days curing is required but uh, if we go for more curing days like 7 to 14 or 14 to 28 uh, the strength will be increasing as I have tested some of the bricks there is a gradual increase in the strength when we go for more curing days but there will not be much effect on this because we are using a small percentage of cement around 6 to uh, 8 percentage of cement so there will be no much increase in the strength but there will be a small increase or gradual increase in the strength so it is enough if you cure for 7 days so in right side you can see the uh, bricks are uh, arranged in such a manner that is nothing but the storing of bricks next is we'll uh, see what the overview of this uh, interlocking stabilizer soil brick here you can see the left side picture there is a ridge and a bed these are the uh, for the interlocking system and in the middle picture you can see the interlocking system how it will work and in the four side all the sides like four sides of the bricks are provided with the grooves and that's why it is getting the interlocking uh, system in the right side you can see the picture uh, the courses of bricks uh, the dry stacking of bricks without mortar and in the below you can see that there are the two kinds of bricks are produced in uh, our places like uh, 11 by 8 by 6 inches of uh, 17 kgs weight and also 11 by 6 by 6 inches of 14 kgs these are the two common type of bricks available uh, I am talking about the soil bricks and you can see the weight is very less compared to the laterite stone or cement uh, blocks the weight is very uh, less uh, it's only one third or half of the laterite stone next uh, we'll move on to the construction method i will explain how to construct house or buildings using this kind of uh, interlocking bricks and uh, these all are from my own experience and i, I will be sharing all the photos like from my own site see here these are the conventional type foundation when we talk about the foundation it is depend upon the site condition like in different region different kind of foundation is adopted but in uh, south india in some of our kerala karnataka and all we select laterite stone as a uh, building material for the foundation here, you, here this site is located in kasargod and myself and my friend hari prasad is uh, doing construction uh, doing the work here and uh, here uh, you can see the uh, lateral stone foundation there is no difference in the foundation we are only taking a uh, interlocking brick for wall construction here uh, one thing you can remember that uh, no need of a plinth beam because the walls will be lightweight if you give uh, these interlocking bricks bricks the weight is less and also uh, heavy foundation is not required it is a lightweight wall and uh, move on to next slide these are the first uh, after foundation we need to give one DPC that is a damp proof concrete uh, it is of around 3 inches or 4 inches here we gave 3 inches only uh, the use of damp proof co uh, co concrete is nothing but in order to uh, reduce the uh, dampness in the superstructure or in the wall absolutely there will be some dampness in the foundation from the earth and it will be uh, get into the walls so in order to avoid that we are giving three inches uh, of damp proof concrete it is a must if you give it is it will be uh, better because we are not giving any plastering over the wall so uh, it is better to give a uh, damp proof course and also we are not giving plinth beam that's why uh, the dpc is very very important uh, the thickness of the dps you can see only 8 inches because here we are using 8 inch thickness bricks go to next slide here the first interlocking brick layers with the cement mortar as i told uh, it's a dry stacking but it's only but in the in case of the first layer of brick the first course of brick we need to give some mortar cement grout or cement mortar over the dpc damp proof con concrete we can give mortar and first brick layer can be uh, laid the first course of brick can be laid here uh, why we are giving such mortar for the first layer means for the stability you can see uh, the entire walls uh, while we need to rest on the first course so there should be some stability so for that we are giving the first layer of bricks with mortar 
and you can see the mason is constructing with some water level why because they are very much important the first brick course is very important because uh, so very good skilled labors are required for this and uh, after first course we can see the next uh, layers of bricks here i have included one video uh, here you can see the mason is uh, uh, constructing the next layers of bricks without any mortar without cement uh, and also you can see how cute uh, that uh, mason is constructing the walls and uh, it is uh, nothing but the because of the interlocking system the dry stacking is possible and uh, it is a very fast construction and uh, it's a rapid construction technology for wall construction here uh, in this wall uh, I have used 6 inches bricks. The previous one I told uh, 8 inches but uh, there is no videos available. So this one is 6 inch. See you can see after the uh, laying of brick courses together. So uh, this will be the wall after constructing and you can see uh, the it's a faster construction like within a four days you can finish entire wall up to lintel level because uh, around thousand bricks can be laid by a mason in a single day because no need of any curing uh, in a normal or conventional type uh, construction we have to wait after one meter of construction because it should get cured but here no uh, mortar no water nothing is used so it is a dry stacking so easily we can construct and up to uh, 2.1 meter that means up to lintel level we can uh, construct in a, at a stretch, uh, stretch so when i move to next slide you can see the other construction necessities like windows ventilation uh, door openings cupboard openings everything is given as per the conventional method only there is no difference in it uh, you can do whatever you do in the conventional buildings uh, also in this uh, interlocking brick buildings you can see the openings are given and one more thing is the lintel uh, lintel should be given uh, to the end over entire wall because uh, that uh, it will give more strength to the wall and also one more thing uh, you can observe in the lintels it is kept inside like if the 8 inch brick wall is used only 7 inch will be the uh, lintels uh, thickness why because uh, we are giving 1 inch offset one inch inside we are keeping the uh, lintel one inch inside the uh, compared to the wall finishing why because we are uh, we are using some methods like uh, we are we want to uh, convey the electric conducts conduits inside that uh, lintels that's why the offset is given you can uh, pass all the electrical uh, conduits pipes and all in that so that is the uh, idea of uh, giving some offset in the lintels next slide these are the uh, roof work a roof you can give any kind like uh, as per the conventional uh, the rcc slab also we can give and also tile roof also given in the left side picture you can see uh, rcc slab is given with the cantilever beam and the right side you can see uh, mangalore tile uh, roofing so it is no uh, no difference in the roofing and all uh, you can give both Next is finishing work. This finishing work is entirely depend upon the client requirement. Uh, some clients need to be finished in the flat finishing is needed. Some are uh, will go for uh, low cost finishing. Here, usually what we do is uh, we give one uh, waterproof coating like level plast or uh, uh, waterproof putty we can give as a first layer or first coat. And uh, uh, especially in the exterior walls, uh, we should give uh this waterproof coating and at the interior uh, no need of waterproofing if you give also it is good after waterproofing coating we can give uh, exterior emulsion paint for the finishing so here uh, these are the finishing work and also you can uh, plaster if you plastering can be done if needed but usually plastering is not required because uh, that, that is the benefit of main benefit of interlocking bricks Next you can see the after finishing, uh, the finishing like uh, there is no plastering is done, only painting is done, the waterproofing coat and uh, as well as 
painting is done and different color as per the requirement we can give in the left side picture it is look uh, very good uh, because of the architectural view is very good the paint also very good and the right side also it is attractive but it is a low cost in the left side is uh, i think the uh, the client need to be uh, look the uh, house very luxurious so uh, they have spent some more money uh, for the finishing work in the right side it also good but it is a low cost uh, if you go for low cost uh, there is there will be no compromise in the uh, strength and all the finishing uh, you can select as per the requirement uh, these are the finishing and i will show you some of the finished houses you can see this is also one of the finished house in kasaragod uh, which is done by some other engineer and uh, the finishing you can see it is very good uh, here the ground floor is done with rcc slab and the first floor is done with uh, tile roofing and it's a contemporary style also and this is my uh, house here you can see uh, the ground floor is done with the ground uh, rcc slab and first floor is of manglu tile roofing and the right side you can see the inside walls here i have used uh, only uh, i have not used the putti also i have used the putti for the corner finishing and all the finishing between uh, door frames window frames and uh, the lintel and all but the entire wall is not given with any uh, putti here I, what i have used is uh, I have given one uh, acrylic uh, emulsion paint and also over that one sleek paint it look like varnish that 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 gives the glossy uh, effect on the wall you can see the it, it will be shining and here uh, I want to share some more things like when when I, uh, the ground floor is constructed before 12 years and you can see as the RCC slab it is very hot inside like the temperature is very high and it is more than uh, we cannot we can't affordable that afford the temperature and what i uh, thought is to construct one more floor that time i come to know about this uh, interlocking bricks and i have studied and i come to know that uh, there is some cost effectiveness like cost will be less and also it will be eco-friendly and after that uh, i used uh, these bricks and when i want to construct the roof uh, i i went to for uh, mangalore tail but it cost around 20 to 25 rupees and uh, that time i uh, i was searching for some second hand like used tails mangalore tail as you know that uh, all this gold always so i i got some mangalore tails uh, uh, for free the uh, nowadays uh, many people want to renovate their own houses like tiles tail roof to rcc slab that time it is a very uh, uh, there is a headache for them for uh, dumping this waste where to waste so the owner of uh, uh, the owner gave me these all uh, around 2500 mangrove tail for free and uh, that's why i got uh, my house very low cost that is also one reason and move on to next slide how to reduce uh, construction cost here uh, some are the methods i have adopted in my uh, i adopt in my side that i i want i will explain first thing is uh, minimize the depth of foundation because the wall is lightweight and no need of uh, plinth beam that is one method if we use interlocking bricks as a wall the foundation can be uh, reduced the uh, lightweight uh, for lightweight wall heavy foundation is not required you can avoid the plinth beam next thing is uh, using of interlocking brick for walls that is the second method I use to reduce the cost. Next is uh, using of uh, precast RCC door frames and window frames. Uh, as compared to wooden windows frames and uh, door frames, it is very cheap. The cost of wood, you know, it is very high and also the labor cost is very high for the wooden frames. If you want to do wooden frames or wooden doors, wooden uh, window frames, the labor cost itself costs more than uh, the full cost of these uh, precast rcc uh, window frames as you know the uh, window frames are of only thousand to thousand five rupees uh, including labor and all but the wooden frames are costly and compared to the life the durability of uh, uh, precast rcc frames it is more than uh, wooden frames as we know that if we expose the wooden frames to rain or water it will decay easily within uh, five or ten years it will decay and you have to replace it but if you use uh, these 
cement frames i mean rcc frames it will, it will give more life and we'll move to the next slide then one more method i use using tiled uh, sunshade instead of rcc you know that the rcc itself cost labor cost and if we finish with rcc also we need to plaster it plastering uh, itself uh, again the cost and uh, again you need to paint it but if we use uh, this kind of truss work uh, steel pipes and uh, laying the mangrove tail over it uh, this site is at to finish but uh, this is the one of method to reduce the cost of sunshade and also it will give more attractive look more aesthetic view will be there compared to the uh, cement concrete sunshade this is uh, another method for reducing the cost next is uh, using customized fabricated like aluminum fabricated doors or upvc doors for the windows here you can see the aluminum fabricated why it is uh, uh, customized means nowadays we can select the color whichever here i i selected white color it's a powder paint and one more benefit is uh, instead of using wooden or other materials uh, here no need of repainting once it is company painted means no need of repainting but if you use other materials like wooden or something you have to give paint from uh, in uh, or in some years after some years and uh, in the right side you can see the upvc it is nothing but unplasticized pvc you know that pvc pipe you might have seen it is very uh, it is not strong it is uh, deformable but upvc means unplasticized that itself shows uh, the material is strong so upvc also better option nowadays for the windows and it is uh, cheap and uh, of good quality next is uh, using precast staircase uh, this is one of method uh, low cost method to use uh, staircase in this this material is concord and uh, this material is of composite material like concrete is there and uh, cement uh, uh, steel frames are there inside the steel frames the concrete mesh is kept or concrete uh, cement bar, uh, steel bars kept and it is concreted and there is no compromise in the strength it is strong and uh, uh, the life the its life also more compared to the concrete rcc step this staircase is of uh, low cost and uh, it gives more life also and one more thing we can uh, rearrange these steps if i if we want to uh, move this place from uh, move this staircase from one place to another place we can move uh, easily because it is just a uh, welding welded joints and uh, this step cost only 25000 to 30000 the left side picture is of my house itself it is it costed around uh, 30000 for me including the handrails and if you go for rcc uh, staircase the labor charge itself uh, 30 to 40000 rupees again you need to plaster it and uh, the material charge is there and again you have to uh, lay tiles or granite over it and it will cost around 80000 to 1 lakh for the single staircase but this kind of to select go for this kind of uh, staircase uh, it will cost around 30000 rupees and uh, next is uh, the wiring conduit inside the lintel uh, inside the if, uh, pipe is more you can't afford uh, we can't give in the give inside but you can give some offset and give as i told in the previous slide and next is no plastering is required for this uh, interlocking brick stabilized uh, brick walls next is availability of used mangalore tiles as i told in my house i have used uh, second hand mangalore tile that will be good if uh, anyway you will get it for uh, 5 rupees maximum 5 rupees for the second hand uh, uh, mangalore tile or a tiled roof next is is it safe there are some uh, maybe people may be having some having some doubts about the uh, strength as we know that uh, low cost means uh, low quality that's what we uh, think when we uh, if we go some shop and if you go for if you want to buy some low, low material like uh, if you go for the less cost you know that the quality will be less but here it is not like that the quality there is no compromise in the quality uh, low cost and with the good quality there is no compromise in the quality here there are some of the indian standards we are following in the interlocking brick there is a indian standard code book 1725 specification for soil based blocks used in general building construction here there are some specifications like the compressive strength of the brick should not be less than 
20 kg per centimeter square that means 2 newton per mm square and the water absorption of the brick if you keep the brick for 24 hours in the water and if you compare with the previous weight it should not be greater than 15 percent day that means the water absorption should not be more than 15 percent day and the fluorescence the attack by chemicals and all it should be uh, imperceptible these are the three conditions given in that code book and these bricks are uh, following it and uh, the compressive strength is more than 20 i mean 2 newton per mm square when i t i have tested around 150 bricks in lab and the strength i got is around 2.2 to 4 newton per mm square as we increase the curing days uh, you will get more strength and the water absorption also it is not more than 15 percent these are the uh, safety factors next is you can see how do ancient buildings uh, uh, and survived earthquakes as been you, you will be familiar with these uh, structures these are built before uh, decades like thousand or two thousand years before this uh, these are constructed and these structures survived many uh, environmental uh, effect like earthquake and natural calamities and many things affected this but these buildings are uh, these structures are survived it you can see in the left side the magnificent interlocking stone at sakshi human and machu picchu in peru and some of the greek construction and uh, when i have referred some research, research papers the one of the reason for the survival of these buildings is interlocking system uh, what i what i'm pointing out is this interlocking system was there before many years the, our ancestors used in some of the structures i'm not telling only interlocking system is the uh, reason for the these uh, structures survival of these structures but that also one uh, point in that because uh, that also one reason interlocking system also uh, one reason for the survival of this kind of buildings that's why i gave these examples next i have done some comparison with the conventional method brick construction and conventional uh, stone construction later stone i have compared with the stone uh, stone walls here this uh, comparison is only for wall i am telling this is a house of uh, 900 square feet here i have not included all the data like dimension and all i have included the final slide like the cost comparison here you can see the abstract for laterite stone uh, size is 11 by 9 by 8 inches when we use laterite stone masonry uh, you need to uh, pointing pointing is needed and also plastering is required next is painting but if we use uh, uh, interlocking bricks there is no pointing or plastering there is no plastering so uh, when when i compared with the cost it is taken from the schedule of rates in karnataka 2018-19 and the, uh, I have observed that the interlocking bricks walls are cheap, uh, 40 percent cheaper than uh, laterite stone masonry or laterite stone walls. And next is uh, I am going to tell some of the advantages of interlocking brick. As, uh, as we discussed earlier, the burnt brick in India, uh, we are producing burnt brick. You can see the in photo, it is nothing but one of the factory producing burnt brick in India. And you can see how much uh, CO2 is emitting emitted it is a there is a pollution from burnt brick making operations but if we use stabilized bricks or CSCB bricks there will be no uh, pollution like this there will be no emission of carbon because we are not burning it it is only curing and here uh, there is energy crisis will be there if we use uh, if we produce more number of burnt bricks uh, we need majority of the energy into this production of this kind of bricks because it need to burn so it is an energy source and there will be an energy crisis and also emission of co2 and next is temperature uh, these interlocking brick houses are eco friendly i have tested in my own house uh, during the april may months the temperature was 25.3 degrees celsius in the morning and uh, I believe that it is because of the interlocking system because there is no plastering there is no pointing there is some minimum uh, cement and sand there are also one of the benefit if we uh, if we are going for this uh, eco-friendly houses uh, temperature inside the house also will reduce is one of, one more reason is there because i have used the manglo tail as roofing material that's also one reason and uh, this was taken during the uh, month of april uh, and may next is uh, cost effective houses we can 
give cost effective houses for the rural people rural uh, areas because low income families are located moreover in uh, rural areas so we can give them affordable houses and one more thing is uh, more floor area uh, as i discussed earlier the size of the brick is only uh, the thickness is 6 inches and 8 inches when we compare to other walls it will be 9 inches because here no plastering and you will be getting more floor area because uh, if the wall is of 6 inches and the one side itself you, will, you can save 3 inches because the normal conventional type wall is around 9 inches and in the four side if you compare around 10 square feet you will be getting in 100 square feet houses because the wall occupy, occupying area is less compared to a conventional type of building so there will be more floor area next thing is uh, rapid construction as i told uh, mason can construct up to 1000 uh, bricks per day so uh, the construction will be rapid and quick the time will be time duration required is very less and next is uh, some limitation as i told the advantages there are some limitations for this one thing is uh, waterproofing of exterior walls you can see some the walls of walls with the dampness because these walls are exposed to rain or water that's why this dampness occurs and one more thing what happens is uh, as i gave a putty finish in it uh, when it uh, when it uh, come contact with the water it may expand that's why the reason for this dampness and uh, the solution for this dampness is waterproofing better to give waterproofing coat first than painting exterior paints next thing is skilled labors are required because the normal mason the uh, usual conventional type building those who do uh, that ma mason can't do this kind of bricks because very experienced labors are required these are the two limitations i found next thing is uh, we'll go to, to the summary summary is uh, uh, throughout India, there are dilapidated houses, especially in rural areas. So, uh, there is a necessity of low cost housing in such areas where low income groups dwell. So, for these people, we need to provide affordable materials, affordable techniques uh, to construct homes. That is one of the summary. Next thing is, uh, nowadays the construction done using advanced material like concrete, plastics, glasses and all uh, has an adverse effect on the environment. Uh, compared to soil because the considering the energy crisis in our country the stabilized brick can be preferred over other materials for construction of houses see as we know that the concrete cement we use for the usual uh, construction once it uh, its life is over we need to be renovate during that time you have to uh, uh, dispose these materials so it will affect uh, environment and uh, if we use the brick materials it itself earth so there will be no direct uh, impact on environment because because we can easily uh, dispose or decompose next thing is the construction using stabilized bricks reduces the cost of walls around 40 percentage so the overall house cost will be reduced next is uh, regarding strength and durability there is no compromise in case of low cost construction as we uh, shown all the uh, structural members like uh, beams and all there is these all are conventional type only but there is no compromise in the strength parameter so in the current situation uh, we are facing many problems so there is there is a problem for uh, our income also so in this current situation it is better it is a very uh, good time for this innovative idea like uh, environmental friendly housing technologies so it is the time to adopt this kind of uh, material for the construction and for the affordable construction of houses so these are my findings and summaries and if you like these things uh, you can subscribe my channel and you can share the videos and also uh, like and also comment your uh, uh, views on it and also you can comment your doubts thank you we'll see you in next video